Hello everyone, today I'll show you how to replace any DDS image in Hearts of Iron 4 Vanilla and DLCs, which is pretty much all of them with the exception of flags. That includes leaders, research, division icons, loading screens and so on. I'll briefly go over sounds too. The reason I don't replace country or language rules and so on is because of modern version compatibility. If you stick to only images and sounds, you can be assured it'll always work regardless of what mods you activate. You'll only need one program, GIMP. Alternatively, you can use Photoshop, however you might have to install a DDS image plugin for it. As far as I know, GIMP already has one included, so we'll be using that. If you've already done any steps, you can skip them using the chapter timecodes. So download GIMP and let's go. First off, we need to create a mod. Go into the game launcher and click on all installed mods. Then go on upload mod, where you'll find the create mod button. That's pretty pro placement. If you only knew how long it took me to find that! There, you can enter the mod's details. The version number doesn't really matter, just put a 1 there. However, make sure you choose a nice name for the directory as changing that later can be a bit of a headache. Select fitting tags. I'll only be replacing some random images and perhaps sounds, so I'll tick those too. Now that the mod is created, let's open it up. On Windows, your mod should be under Documents, Paradox Interactive, Hearts of Iron 4, Mod. You'll see its folder for it there, alongside the mod manifest file, however we won't have to change anything in the file. If we enter a folder, there's another manifest, however we can leave that alone as well. Now, I want you to keep this window open where we do the next few steps. We'll have to open the game files now, which is pretty easy. Go to Games and right-click Hearts of Iron. If you aren't using English, the buttons should be in the same place anyway. Click on Properties, then Local Files, and then Open. You can now close the Steam window as another one should have appeared. Here you can see all your game files as well as the DLC files, which I'll talk about later. For this tutorial, I want to modify the Canadian leader as well as the field marshal. Images are saved in GFX, portraits are in leaders, and now you have to find the right country code. I already know it has to be CAN, so I can just type it on my keyboard. A link to all the codes is in the description, however they're actually pretty easy to guess. Here we can see two characters. Now I'm too lazy to open up the game and look up the names, so we can just go onto the Paradox wiki for country leaders. Ctrl F for Canada, the default leader is Mackenzie. We have to copy his portrait into a mod and mirror the game's file structure. So for this, put a mod folder next to the game folder. Our starting point for the game folder is the Hearts of Iron folder. For the mod, it'll be the mods folder. In the game folder, we are right now under GFX Leader Scan. We have to mirror this in a mod. Create the folder GFX, then Leaders, and below that Can. Make sure you capitalize letters correctly. Now we can copy the portrait we want to replace. Currently, if we were to start the game for mod enabled, the portrait in the game will be overridden by a mod portrait. But of course, this makes no sense if we don't customize it first. So let's open it up in GIMP. GIMP should be open, and a small window about the images and port shall appear. If you don't see it, check the taskbar and select it there. Just press on OK. We're already pretty close to the finish line now, but please don't leave yet, there's a few more things you should know. Now, I could put in any image I want and call it a day, but I want to do something at least a little fancy. First, I need the original background. A link to it in perfect size is in the description. If you're looking for the spy background, check the game files for the folders Tools and then Art. You'll just have to resize it first. If the new image has a white moving boundary, right click it and then click New Layer. You can see the different image layers somewhere in GIMP. If you're planning to use this program often, I heavily recommend that you customize it the way I did. Okay, I need a transparent PNG of a new character next. I'll just be using the first one I found on my PC. I place it in, new layer if it has the right background, but not in this case, and now I just need to scale it. For ease of use, I hide the background layer and then roughly try to align the heads. Done. Before we can save, we need to make sure there's only one fitting layer left. Unhide all layers, delete the ones you don't want and merge the rest. Select the cut tool and hold left click from the outside top left to the outside right bottom so everything's selected. 
press enter. Make sure you do this, in my experience the image can break if you don't. Next we can finally go to file and hit export override. Also, never overwrite the original. If you do that and the same to your mod copy, you'll have to reorder the original using Steam, which is check files for errors. That takes a lot of time, so do yourself a favor and look at the bottom of the screen after export. It'll tell you the path of your exported file, which should be your mod. If it's not, then you have to, you know, switch the two files. And we're finished. Make a new playset for testing your mod, enable it, select the playset again because the super launcher might have reset it, and start the game. And there we go, we've successfully replaced the leader of Canada. Using this approach you can replace all vanilla game files. This also counts for sounds. I recommend using Audacity so you can adjust the volume of your custom sound to the original volume. Otherwise people's ears either blow off or they don't hear it. The last few things we need to talk about are DLC files, generals, mod overrides, plus uploading. But if you don't care about that, you can just close the video and watch it another time when you need it. Okay, in the root game folder, there's the DLC folder, which contains the ones you own. I want to customize the Canadian Field Marshal, so I have to open the Together for Victory DLC. Now, this is gonna become a new root folder for modding. We'll have to move it, just how we did it early with the normal game. So, again, I go down GFX, leader scan, which we've already created earlier anyway, and then check which one of them is Field Marshal. So I'll go back to the Paradox Wiki where all of them are listed. In this case, it's Charles. We copy his portrait into a matching mod folder and do all the same stuff again. Then restart the game and boom, there's a replacement. If you want to mod a DLC that you don't have, you'll have to ask someone where the image is that you want to replace and then play with them to see the result. So, what if we have two mods enabled that modify the same thing? Now, this is a bit of a mess, I haven't found proper documentation for it yet, but maybe there will be at some point. Basically, if you don't set any custom add-on mod dependency, some part of the game will decide the mod order. The mod at the highest level will override anything below it. There's also a difference between local and workshop mods, so I can't recommend any reliable way for testing this. As said, if you want to make a sub-mod, you're going to have to look up dependencies. Speaking of the workshop, let's finally wrap this up. If you want your mod to have a custom thumbnail, which I highly recommend, put a thumbnail.png image into your mod folder. If you're only uploading it for your mates anyway, just put a dog image here or something. If you want something specific, like a GIF, please look up further instructions online. I just use a 512 square image, because that's how you do it in Gmod. And now, finally, we go to the game launcher, mods, upload mod, select it, make sure it's the newest version so people don't get an error. Workshop, right to the version doesn't even matter anyway because we'll never update it. And upload. Go to your profile, workshop, and then on to your mod. Make sure to add a screenshot and release it to the public or friends only. Congratulations! If you've done all the steps, you now uploaded your mod. You can update it anytime over the upload button in the launcher. I hope you'll enjoy adding funny stuff into the game and like each other's mods in the workshop so you get out of the zero stars. Goodbye and have a nice day. Don't forget, God loves you.